now available in paperback and ebook book The Man Who Rules the World. John Hayes must bring together men and gods to overcome a threat that seeks to destroy the planet. The Man Who Rules the World. Now available in paperback and e-readers everywhere. Last weekend, Marvel Studios' Black Panther had a $200 million opening at the box office. And while many in the black community are celebrating this as an accomplishment, because this is the first African-American film with an African-American director and African-American cast open to such a large box office, I see it as a testament to the dysfunction of this Afro-American Negro. And the reason why I see it as a testament to the dysfunction of the mind of this Afro-American Negro is because this opening of Black Panther to $200 million at the box office shows us all how much this Afro-American Negro loves white people. Because I doubt any other film created by a black director or created with black dollars would have gotten the frenzy that this film received. And the only reason this Black Panther received this type of frenzy from this Afro-American Negro is because the Black Panther is not a black-owned character. He is not a black character created by black people. He is a black character created by two Jewish men, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Moreover, your Black Panther is a character who was owned by Marvel Comics, a subsidiary of Disney. So many of these spellbound Negroes who came to the movie theater in their made in Taiwan kufis and dashikis decided they were going to support this black product, but they were only supporting this so-called black product because they wanted white acceptance. Because this is the problem with this Afro-American Negro. This Afro-American Negro deifies and worships white people. And they love white people so much that they think any sort of attention given to them by these white people is some sort of testament to them being accepted by white people. And all those Negroes who decided they were going to get into this frenzy over this Black Panther movie, they weren't getting into a frenzy over this character. And they weren't spending their money to because they liked this character like people did with 1989's Batman. No, many of these Negroes, they were going to the theater because this was white people paying attention to them. Again, when, when Scott Sanders and Michael Jai White financed Black Dynamite, I did not see this sort of frenzy. And the reason why we did not see this sort of frenzy is because when it comes down to the Negro and his own products, he doesn't see them as having a value. He only sees value when white people are paying attention to him. If something is owned by white people, they see it as having value. When Marvel's Black Panther is owned by white people, it's a black character which creates this image of black people for white people. And many of these Negroes flocked to these theaters because they wanted to fit into the black box that would get them white acceptance. They created a covert contract in their mind, believing that if they go see this Black Panther movie, they will get white acceptance. And that's the main reason why many flocked to this movie in the large numbers that they did. Because I look at that box office opening, and I look at the frenzy many of these Negroes were in, and again, it is a testament to the dysfunctional mindset of this Afro-American Negro. I mean, to see Negroes with their natural hair, women with the natural hair, Negroes going in with Made in Taiwan kufis and dashikis, going into the theater talking about this is a testament to black pride, this is a testament to black power. Well, excuse me, how is it a testament to black pride and black power when, you have, when you're going to a theater to watch a black character who was created by two Jewish white men. That just does not make any sort of logical sense. But in the mind of the Afro-American Negro, he believes this is going to be a testament to black pride. And he thinks that this will elevate him in the eyes of this white person as a proud black person, clearly showing us 
how dysfunctional the thinking of this Afro-American Negro is. I mean, it's just completely backwards when you take a objective look at the way many of these Afro-American Negroes were acting in regards to this Black Panther movie. I mean, again, I never saw any of this same sort of emotionalism, even back in the days of the 1980s, with Spike Lee's She's Gotta Have It, Robert Townsend's Hollywood Shuffle, or many of the black films I have supported throughout the years, which were produced and financed by African Americans. I mean, I think about I Will Follow, which was directed by Ava DuVernay and financed with $50,000. I didn't see anybody getting that crazy over that film. And that was a small film that was distributed to places like the Magic Johnson Theater. Yet, we have all these Negroes. They're going out here buying up movie theaters for Black Panther. But none of these people would think to take these kids to go to something like an I Will Follow in the exact same fashion where you'll go out and buy up a theater. You won't think to go out and buy up a theater for Black Dynamite. And again, the reason why they won't do that is because they love white people more than they love themselves. And this is the big problem with this Afro-American Negro. He always puts himself second, and this Negro female always puts herself second. And that's why they will go out and out here and take their money to go support Black Panther before they support a project created by a black filmmaker, a black fantasy writer like myself, or a black comic creator. People who want to create content in their own image they don't see as having value, but the image of a black person created by a white person, they see it as having value because they deify that white person. And this black character, like the Black Panther, is someone holy because it con it's somebody who is creating an image of them which is coming straight from God. And that's the core reason why this Negro, again, ran out here and spent over 200 million of his 1.1 trillion in spending power to go see this Black Panther movie. I think about that $200 million opening for Black Panther, and I say to myself, here is a testament to the power of the black dollar. Unfortunately, it has been used in a completely dysfunctional fashion. The Negro has $1.3 trillion in spending power and $2.2 trillion in cash, and he takes it to go take kids to see a movie featuring a black character created by two Jewish guys who create their own vision of Africa to support a white corporation like Disney, but he won't take that exact same $200 million and open up one of these independent black films like an I Will Follow or a Black Dynamite out here or even some of these other independent black films and give them that type of strong opening to make a powerful statement to the power of the black dollar. Moreover, they won't take those dollars that they have after they've given $200 million to Disney and go out here and support many of these black comic creators who have their own comics, these black fantasy writers like myself who go out of their way to write fantasy stories which feature black characters, nor will they go out here and support many of these other black filmmakers out here who try to make films which tell stories about their experience. No, for them, this is all about this Black Panther. We're going to make this this major milestone when it's not really a milestone when you think about black characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because we had War Machine back in Iron Man 2. We had Hemadol in Thor. We had um, the Falcon in Captain America. And we have ha always had black characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Moreover, we had Blade, which was create, which Wesley Snipes used to revive the entire superhero movie genre. And heroes before that, like Meteor Man and Blank Man. But the Afro-American Negro will erase all of that history, act like it does not exist, all because none of those characters were white approved by a corporation like Disney or created by a white person. God himself, the, and the Black Panther, is created by God, 
So they're going to act like these characters don't exist because they were not created by God, nor do they get the attention of God, nor do they get the attention of the people at these corporations, which is the heaven that com they come from, which is the Disney Corporation. So when I look at these Negroes, again, they show me how spellbound they are to this whole fitting into the white version of black with this whole $200 million they spent with on this Black Panther movie, and how many in the black community, even many of these pro-blacks, do not believe in their many of their concepts like group economics and will twist these concepts all so they can elevate the white person's version of black instead of trying to create the darker shade of black, which is the black culture we create of ourselves, by ourselves, and for ourselves. No, they want to be accepted by white people, and that's why we saw so many people going out of their way to buy up entire movie theaters and send kids to, from schools to see this movie, and why so many people were in a frenzy over this movie. At the end of the day, we spent $200 million of our $3.3 trillion in cash and credit spending power to send it to the Disney Corporation to send a message to the Disney Corporation that they don't need to value us, they do not need to regard us. All they have to do is send some, put some crumbs on the table and the Negroes will flock over there and not try to not only not to get better for themselves, they'll just take whatever crumbs are given to them and not show any sort of value. I mean, that's what this Black Panther movie was sending the statement to. We were not thinking about what we were going to do after this movie or even before this movie because if we were in a mindset where we were thinking objectively and constructively, we would be saying, hey, they're going to make this movie, then we're going to go out of our way to support our own products. I mean, when they go out here and make movies featuring Asian characters, you, see, you don't see the Asian community in a frenzy over those kind of movies. No, they go out and support their own movies. They go out and promote their own movies. Same thing with the Hispanic community, and same thing with many other white ethnic groups. They, they will announce these movies, but they will make sure that their communities are enriched by that announcement, by pushing and promoting the, their own products in their own community, and making efforts to reach larger audiences. Unfortunately, the Afro-American Negro all he did was get in, his eyes got spellbound and glazed over. He saw that Black Panther announcement, and all he thought about was how many ways he could spend all his money on, with his God, and how much of his money can he tithe to his God, in addition to going out here and buying these movie tickets. He did not think about how he could help his fellow brothers in the community and sisters out here who were creating African-American fantasy African-American science fiction and making efforts to try to create fantasy f made by black people for black people to show the rest of the world that we can see ourselves in a futuristic world or a historical world or a fantasy world just like everyone else. No, the Negro didn't want to do that type of work to try to help those type of black people. All he thought about was white acceptance and at the end of the day that two hundred million dollars he spent was just like throwing money, good money, after bag. And it literally was like sending the entire message to the world, to the world that the black dollar has as little value as a $5 food stamp without the book. If you'd like to try some of my SJS Direct Fantasy titles, you may head over to Amazon.com to pick up the Isis series, the E-Steam series, The Temptation of John Haynes, and the Spinsterella Trilogy. And if you want to see me make more videos like this and publish more books, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Spellbound, a darker shade of black. Get your copy today at your favorite online bookseller.